Thank you so much. <coughs> Next speaker to the stage is award-winning filmmaker. One of those who have traveled abroad to see the world and get inspired. He graduated from Columbia University School of Arts and has diverse trains of films behind him. And it needs to mention and it needs to mention that Canary, which was his thesis film, it premiered at the Oscar qualifying Foy, Foy, Foyle Film Festival. <laughs> As you can hear, I'm very international myself. <laughs> and went, and uh, the next speaker went on, uh, and this film went on to play at over 30 festivals worldwide. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Erlendur Sveinsson. Um, hello, everybody. Um, it's been um, challenging to figure out really what to talk about when you're asked to talk about inspiration, talk about filmmaking, um, because there is so much to talk about. Um, I think the best way to start is with me and who I am. Um, I grew up in a, in a small town called Austenis which is a suburb of Reykjavik. And it's known for two things. It has um, the largest water slide in Iceland uh, to date. Um, and it's also um, the home of the president, the presidential mansion, that is. Um, and I didn't grow up watching uh, or making films so much. I was, you know, I'm a part of the VHS generation, so I would watch movies religiously, to a day almost, one new, one old. Um, I, you know, always was fascinated by these, you know, visions into the world outside of mine. Um, and that kind of drew me to watch, you know, challenging films, etc. cetera. Um, but then things changed when I moved as a teenager to America. That's where my mother went to uh, chase her MFA in fine arts. And I took um, a film development class in San Francisco, which is where we, we lived. Um, and is it, it isn't until recently that I kind of discovered that that was really the thing that shaped me in, 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 in a big way, um, because I discovered the magic of film. Um, it was a class where we made a pinhole camera, we created something um, to capture photos, and we also developed them in a dark room. And it is only recently that I have been kind of thinking back and starting to understand what it was that drew me to get so excited about this. And I think it's, it's the engine that drives me today and it's the engine that, that will you know, drive me till the end of time making films. And it is my fascination with time and capturing moments in time. And I like to look at cameras like time machines. You know, they're little objects that allow us to capture moments. Um, <clears throat> we can capture amazing performances. We can capture amazing light. We can create a situation that is very rare and maybe doesn't usually happen to people. We can create moments. Um, and after this film class in, in San Francisco, I or my family went and bought a, a home video DV camera. And I was filming all the time. I would film my parents, you know, walking around and eating and sleeping. I would film the trees, the birds, whatever. And I think it was me kind of discovering this kind of tool that I had, which was capturing time. Um, <clears throat> and we forget it, I think, sometimes in the show business, in, in this industry that is so complicated and so big that, um, we are, in a way, filming people at a certain age and at a certain time in their life. You know, looking at old movies and you are seeing somebody perform, you know, a, a scene or whatever. And, and it's like, you know, later on becoming a filmmaker, you understand that this person woke up that day and was kind of going through a moment in their life. And this is not just the actress. This is everybody coming together, you know, making this, this thing. Um, and after this, 
you know, realization that I've, that I've been having, which is that we are, in a way, capturing moments and capturing time, it has kind of made me kind of frame how, how, I, how I go on, how I always kind of try to think of the, um, the big picture. I think directing today um, is different than when I, when I was young and wanted to become a director and make films. It's changing very rapidly because um, I think my challenge every day is, is kind of putting myself in the shoes of the audience and thinking about how they are going to be experiencing um, whatever it is that I'm making at, at each time. And, you know, I sometimes envy filmmakers back in the days when they made um, films mostly for the movies. But today we are always kind of faced with you know, the computer screens, the, the phones, uh, television. You want to create, you know, binge-worthy material that people will continuously watch. Um, but for me personally, and I think this is kind of what, what I always try to think when I'm, when I'm making something, is I, I like to try to create projects that allow you to set yourself in a big auditorium with people and you create kind of an energy of people kind of coming together and viewing something magical and sort of experiencing a journey, whether it's with a character or whether it's multiple characters um, together. Um, I went to the Icelandic Film School, um, which is kind of where I got my first film education. And I think it's very exciting that, we're, um, there, that there is more film education being available for Icelanders now. For me, it was the only way to study film it was in uh, 2007 when the financial crisis had just, or 2008, when the crisis had just hit, and I was you know, an eager filmmaker wanting to learn more. And it is at the Icelandic Film School that I kind of got my first you know, hands-on narrative filmmaking and working with actors and, and sort of moving on from you know, home videos of my parents. Um, and then I worked in the industry for you know, seven years. I worked on, you know, in almost, I think, all departments. Um, and then I went to Columbia University to pursue my MFA degree in filmmaking and I made two short films there um, that sort of, you know, uh, opened a lot of doors for me. And I think, you know, one of the, the things that I learned uh, there about um, this jump into narrative is that, um, you know, I wish, I wish somebody would have, would have told me you know, that there is something called a distributor, for example, which happened later. Um, when I got my first distributor, it really opened this kind of huge um, space of being able to distribute films and, and sort of um, not having to work so much myself in terms of getting seen. Um, and I'm very, very grateful for that. Um, yeah, I think... Um, I'm a huge uh, supporter of Riff and what they have done for me. Um, I'm really you know, honored to be here speaking today. Uh, I would like to tell you a little story uh, about my experience with Riff, which is kind of an inspiration. There was, in 2013, there was a, a one minute film competition. I don't know if you have it here anymore, but I made a one minute film that was um, kind of this compilation of people breathing. It was these little one-second little moments of people breathing in all situations. You know, gasping, sighing, coughing, whatever. And it was all cut together within a minute under like a, a catchy tune. And um, that film ended up winning this competition. And it was a film that was made just kind of out of, you know, spontaneity and wanting to take part in the festival. Uh, and then two years ago when I was... Uh, or a couple of years ago when I was studying in, in, in Colombia, I get a phone call from this huge ad agency in New York saying that they saw the film and wanted to get me to remake the film for AstraZeneca, the pharmaceutical company. <laughs> and I went and made it with, you know, it was like 60 actors and, and you know, a union shoot and it was this, you know, huge production, the biggest production I've ever been a part of in my life. And... It's almost funny to think that you know something so small, which is just like an idea that you want to make something to to uh, 
to take part in a festival or, or you know, whatever. Uh, it's so important that these platforms are made for us and you never know what it's going to bring back to you. Um, so thank you so much.